All right, so we'll get started. Good morning again, ladies and gents, boys and girls, parents and coaches. Once again, I'm Jarrell Mullings, the Secretary General of the Bahamas Basketball Federation and the founder of the Ball and by the Beach Camps. And I have the honor of welcoming you again to day two of five of the first ever Bahamas Virtual Basketball Camp. Is, that was made possible by our title sponsor, the Ministry of Education, Youth, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, and also our goal supporters, Mr. Shippett, the Bahamas Basketball Federation, and Ball and by the Beach Camps. Also, a very special thanks to Coach Sue Phillips of Archbishop Midi High School in California, who was kind enough to share the blueprint of her virtual basketball camp with me through our WBCA network. So we got off to a great start. We got off to a great start yesterday. And like our third goal for the camp, we are going to have an even better camp today. Remember our camp has three main daily goals for you to one, have fun, two, grow and learn, some, grow and learn something new, and three, get better than the day, get better than you were the day before. <clears throat> So take a moment and type one year in the chat if you had fun yesterday. So if you had fun yesterday, I want you to, in the chat, just write, just type year. Great, let me look at the chat. Okay, I see lots of yeah, Christina Malice, I see you, Jason, Justice, all right. So if you had fun and you grew and learned something new yesterday, I want you to type two years. So yeah, yeah. I wish I could hear y'all, but you know, we have to monitor the sound. All right, Travis, Curran, Horatio. It's a lot of people that had a good time yesterday. Good job. DM, I see you, Justice. All right, now if you had fun, if you grew and learned something yesterday and you plan to be better today than you were yesterday, I want you to type three years in the chat. All right, Horatio, Damani, nobody else, Raquel, Travis, Malik, Jason. All right, thank you. I'm trying to get y'all as hype as I possibly can over the internet. <laughs> so for those of you that, have, that may have missed the first day, um, we follow the same format. First, we'll get started with warm-ups with Coach Kale Sly Fox. Then we'll move into skills and drills with various coaches. Today, our lead coach is our international guest coach, Coach Krista Marco, who is the head coach of our senior men's national team and also an assistant coach of the Golden State Warriors. So all my Bahamas national team fans, type oh yeah in the chat. If you're a Bahamas national team fan, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I see you, Dion, Aaliyah. Come on, man, national pride. Everyone should be a national team fan. Y'all know Buddy Hill play for our national team. Okay, Kevin, I see you. Now, to show some love to Coach Chris DeMarco, if you're a Golden State Warriors fan, I want you to type Clay in the chat. Let me see if y'all know how to spell, spell Clay. <laughs> All right. Y'all some real um, Golden State Warriors fan. Y'all know that Clay stands with, starts with a K. Darrell, okay. Tino. Samaya. Man, y'all some smart five-year-olds too. I see the five-year-olds typing. Justice. All right, good job. So after the skills and drills, we'll move on. We'll move on to our theme video fundamentals with Coach Denzel Knowles and Coach McDonald, uh, who are joining us from Freeport. Then we'll focus on those critical elements that set you apart from the masses. So that's our mental skills training with Coach Chantel Penn, our leadership development with Coach Joette Fernando, building basketball IQ with Coach Anton Francis. And then we will end with our fundamentals in action. 
where you will again have the opportunity to watch a basketball game and pinpoint the things you learn in camp. We have lots of prizes and giveaways. Yesterday, 15 young persons won a free basketball. So again, you gotta pay attention during those um, mental skills leadership development sessions so that you can win a prize today. So make sure you stay logged in and focus. And also those campers that attend for all five days, you'll get a certificate on Friday at the end of camp. A bit of housekeeping, make sure you're in an open space again. Don't break up your parents' house and furniture. I saw some of y'all outside yesterday, that's a good thing. Have your basketball handy. If you have two basketballs, make sure you grab both. You know, we do um, two ball handling drills. Keep your water close. If you have a question, use the raise hand feature and we will unmute your mic so that you can ask your question. Um, change your name so that we know who you are. And make sure you're using the presenter view. If you look on the top of your screen, you can select that option so that you can see who the demonstrator is. And please, please, please turn on your camera. Yesterday we had about 150 uh, logged on and only about maybe 70 or so had their cameras on. Turn on your camera. It's okay if your hair ain't fixed. My belly fix, right? So turn on your camera. Let's have some fun so that we can see you and make this as interactive as possible. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started with Coach Kale Fox. And he'll give it, he'll run you through a very quick warm up. So he's going to get started. I don't think your mic is on. Oh. We can't hear you. Oh, I need to unmute you. All right, sorry about that. Hey, what's up, campers? Welcome to day two of Bahamas Basketball Virtual Camp. I'm going to take you through a light warm up. It's going to bring our hands forward, big circles, keep going. There you go. Just adjust my view. Let's work. Perfect. Come on. Good. There you go. You're going to take it in reverse. Take it back. Loosen up. Good. There you go. Five, four, three, two, one. You're going to take that right leg, put it over the left. You're going to take it down. Get a nice stretch. There you go. Come on. Five. Four, three, two, let's go left over right. Take it down. You go. Five, four, three, two, one. Now you're gonna bring it up. Let's get the heart rate up. You got jumping jacks. Let's go. Come on, push. There you go. Straight through. Let's go. I wanna see everyone working. Let's go. There you go. Let's go, Malik. Come on, keep going, guys, and let's go. Push. Let's work. Come on, 10 seconds, let's go. 10, nine, keep going, let's go. Six, five, four, three, two. There we go, there we go. So now what I want, I want you guys to jog in place. You're going nice and slow, let's jog right in place. There you go. Every time I blow my whistle, I want you to pick it up a little faster, okay? Ready? Let's go, we jogging in place, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go a little faster, a little faster. Let's go. We're not at top speed yet. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Pick it up, pick it up. Let's go, let's go. Everyone working, push. Push, let's go. Fast, all out. Fast as you can, let's go. Here we go. Come on, Brian, faster. Let's go, Brian and Brandon, faster. Let's go. Take those legs. That's Maya. Way to move. Let's go. Ten. Trapped, nine, I see you. Eight, seven. Good six, job, Aiden. Five, Kaysen, four. Justice. Two. Good job, campus. Good job. Good job, Darius. I see you, Aliyah and Elizabeth. 
Y'all always show up ready to work. You got squat jumps, all right? We're going to take it down. Good job, Koyo Kido. Take it right back down. Let's go. Come on. You're almost done. Keep pushing. Keep working. I want everyone working. Let's go. There you go. There you go, Brian. Brandon, now you're working. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, Justice. Let's go, Darius. Keep working. Keep pushing. Let's go. What was that? Let's go, Leo. Come on, push. Go. Gregory, good job, Gregory. Go. Good job, Micah. Five. Man. Four. Joette. Two. Let's go. Good Last job, one. There you go. There you go, campus. You Jason McCauley, good job. We got shuffles. We got shuffles. Let's go. Ready. And I blow my whistle. I want you to turn to the left. And I blow my whistle again. We go to the right. All right? Good job, Taisha. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, quick. There we go. Everyone working. Nice, Nathan. Good job, Nathan. Defense. Get low. Oh, Benjamin already worked up a sweat. Come on. Good job, Alkir. Nice, Tito. Take it back. There you go. Keep going. Next side. There we go. Faster, faster, push. Good Come job, Benicio. Go. There we go. There we go. Pick it up. Pick it up. Ten seconds. Let's go. Come on. Good job, Anthony. Let's go. Five, four, three. Let's go, guys, and pick it up. Two. Good job, Jerome. I see you. Keep working, Jerome. Good job. Good job. Shake it out. Shake it out. Last but not least, just want to warm up your core. So I want everyone down. Uh, you could add one more. <laughs> Last exercise. Everyone is down. You could add another workout um, exercise. Let them get warm. All right. Let's go. We take it down. We got crunches, all right? Let's go in five, four, three, two. Knees up. Just crunching. All right, let's go. Bring it up. Nice. Warm up those abs. Good job, Raquel. That's how you get the six pack. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Keep pushing. Come on. That's Coach Boleg doing sit ups on the job. 10 seconds. Yeah, there we go. Come on. Come on, Darius. Let's work. Let's get those abs right. Let's go. Good job, Five. Kevin and Christina. Four. Three. Brian and Brandon. Done. There we go. Last one. I want you to extend, Elijah. Your legs. extend your legs. You can put your hand on your hips. You're going six inches, all right? You're going it out. I want everyone feet up. In five, four, three, two, let's go. Come on. Barely off the ground, six inches. I don't want them too high. I don't want them too low. Come on. Take them down a little bit, Darius. There we go. Nice, Justice, right there. Hold it. Come on. Push. Let's go. Go, Jaheem. Let's go. Don't worry. Miguel, let's go. Ten seconds. Keep working. Seven, six, five, four. Let's go, Jason. Three. One more. Two. Oh, never mind. Good. Good. We're back on our feet. Bring it up. Here we go. All right, Micah, you look warm. Malia, I, I think I see a drip of sweat on your forehead. There you go, guys. Up, Clap it up. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your camp. You got drills and skills next. Way to go, Darius, Aiden, Justice, Kaizen, Brian. You all did great, man. Have a good day. See you all later. Good job, campers. Good job. Uh... Give Coach Kale two claps. He got you all loose and ready for our next session. So we are going to move right along into things. Next, we have, again, our special international guest coach, Coach Chris DeMarco, who's the head coach of our senior men's basketball team and also the assistant coach of the Golden State Warriors. So he has some good stuff set up for you today. And then we're just going to get him plugged in in just a second. All right, so 
I've unmuted Coach DeMarco's mic, so he's going to join us in just a second. So are y'all feeling loose? Ready to go? All right, Chris DeMarco, you're on. Hey, uh, can you do me a favor? And it says there's 100 participants already, so it won't let me log on the iPad. Is that a real thing? Um, well, we have up to 500 participants, so let me. It's not letting me for some reason. Okay, let me make one adjustment. Yeah, let me just see if it lets me get on, just because. I mean, I could do the computer. Okay, no problem. But. Okay, you can try it now. Okay, let me see. Yeah, it's not letting me. It's all right. Let me make sure I'm within, uh, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. Let me uh, just get back here, hold on. All right, can everyone hear me? Yes, yeah, so we can hear you. Good. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry I'm a little late here. It's tough setting up with COVID and everything. Um, <laughs> it's okay, we're glad you're here. Yeah, so let me, let me change this then, hold on. There we go. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, uh, I'm an assistant coach with the Golden State Warriors. I've been here about nine years now. Uh, my my journey started just uh, just through playing myself, uh, and then I went I went to college. I played in college, went into grad school. Was actually taking a different career path, and a situation coaching in basketball opened up. And I was lucky enough to get an internship in the video room um, with the Golden State Warriors. And from there, I just uh, – I was able to learn from a lot of good coaches and just try to build and keep working. And now I've been in a fortunate enough position uh, to be able to do this for a living. Um, and it's, it's something for me that is really – I mean, I, everybody says, like, do – do a, do the job, uh, do a job that just you know you love, and to me, I'm doing it. So uh, I'm I'm very fortunate to be here. Uh, very fortunate to be coaching the Bahamas national team, and uh, I wish I had more resources. But uh, in San Francisco, especially, we can't bring people into the gym right now. So until another coach gets in, uh, I'm kind of on my own. Uh, we'll today we'll just do some ball handling. We'll do some passing, and we'll do some balance stuff that our players have really started to hone in on at the start of their workouts. Um, it's something that our director of performance, Rick Celebrini, has brought over. He used to work with Steve Nash a lot. Um, it's stuff that I think is really beneficial. If you guys are watching any of these playoff games, the shots guys are making, it's because they're balanced. Um, and, and I think that's a really important part of everything, passing, shooting, dribbling. So we'll just get started with uh, everybody. No, nope, we all have one basketball, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. Right. Some well, have two, but the majority have one. Uh, yeah, we're going to get a lot of the same stuff you've been getting. But let's, uh, let's just start. Hopefully I don't lose my breath. Yeah. <laughs> uh, They'll be right along with you if you do. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> so we'll just start getting loose. Let's just right hand low. Right hand low. It's important to always keep your eyes up. Let's 
go why Cajun. Do our eyes up? Why do we keep our eyes up to see the defense, see our defender? You know, we want our teammates to like us. So we want to be able to see them when they're open so we can pass the ball. So let's just get loose right now, right hand. We only need one ball. My man, my man with the two right there. You can get rid of one. We only need one. Let's go right hand, get warmed up. Let's switch it over left. Eyes up. Good job, Darius. Darius, that dribble looks soft, man. You got to pound it. There you go. <laughs> man, this is the worst part. I don't even get to see what anyone's doing. We'll cross it over a little bit again. Just get loose. Good job, Rachel. Rachel has handles. Good job, Sarah. <laughs> Keep your eyes up, Sarah. There you go. Cross it over. I need about five minutes myself to get loose, so this is more for me than you guys. Go right hand again. We'll keep it low. It's Rick celebrating. Has brought over. Used to work. Go left hand. Good job, Malik. Good job, Elizabeth. Cross it over again. Again, this is just getting loose. Be balanced, fundamentals. Good job, Samaya. Way to control. Keep crossing it over. Nice, Christina. Come on, Caden. You taking a water break already? Where's my <laughs> man Travis Ritchie? Stop crossing over. Travis, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Jaheem. Come on, you're just getting loose, Malik. There you go. Uh, take a break. Take a break. Our our best our best ball handlers on our team probably spend about I would say ten to fifteen minutes a day on their ball handling. Uh, it's really important not just for the dribble, but to just get that feel in your hands. So I know you guys did some of this yesterday, but let's just right to left fingertips just in front of you. We'll do the same thing. We'll go behind the back. Let's go high now. Let's keep our arms straight and go in front. Again, this is just feel for the ball, right? Go around again. Now we get low. Start to pick up the speed a little bit. Go high again. What, what ages do we have working today? You guys can take a break. What do we have? Five to 19, is that? All right, let's get through it. Let's get through it. We'll go, uh, we'll go here. We'll go low, we'll come back, we'll go high. So we're high here. Go with me here. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go here. Five, four, three, two, one. Go low. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Get high. Five, four, three, two. Take a break. What, uh, coach? Coach, yesterday with like the three players, I'm pretty jealous of you right now. <laughs> coach Rowe. Yes. Yeah, yep. pretty jealous. Y'all are really social distancing and. A lot, lot, lot of a lot of intensity though. A lot of intensity yesterday. It was good stuff. All right, let's go. Uh, we're going to go back to the dribble. So we're going to pick up the pace a little bit now. I want to go low. Five, four, three, 
two, one, get it high. Five, four, three, two, one. Get it back low. Five, four, three, two, one. High. Five, Are you Kamari? Four, Good job. Three, Good job, Aiden. Two, Christina. One. Samaya, you got to get in an athletic stance. You're standing straight up. Why do we have to get in an athletic stance? When you shoot the ball, you're shooting straight up. You got to be an athlete at all times. You got to be able to go left, right, pull up, shoot, pass. Let's go left hand now. Five, four, three, two, one, high. Good job, Anthony. Five, four, three, two. Uh, Robert or Danny, I see you. Five, four, three, two. Good job, Kevin. One, five, five, four, three, two, one. Lovato, Jason. Oriel. Everyone feeling good? All right, let's start working. Let's just start working this in right here. We're gonna go two hands. We're gonna go around. Let's go around 20 times, all right? We'll count it out. One, two, three, four. Keep your head up if you can, five. Good job, Darius. Six. Okay, Darius, I see seven, you looking at me. I'm looking back at you. Eight, <laughs> nine, 10. 11. Oh, Orlando. 12. 13. Orlando's doing his own thing. <laughs> 15. Come on, 16, Orlando. 17. 18. The bottom, look up. You got two left. Get 19. 20. Good. Good job. Good, let's take one. We'll go around the other foot. Ready? Come on. One. Two. Three. Up, Dwayne, Four. Benicio. Five. Six. Come on, Kiran. Seven. Eight. Nine. Good job, Kassar. Ten. Eleven. Thank you, Maya. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Keep going. Fifteen. Where did Maya go? Sixteen. Oh, Good job, Mike. Good job, Dwayne. Now you got this down. Nineteen. Twenty. Need, need a quick one. Need a quick one. Skills. Why yeah, do you want to be able to handle it low? You handle it low, the defender's going to have a tough time getting to it. Good job, Anthony. Can I, I see you? Yeah. We just we just had the warm up. You know, this is Seth Cooper. He's one of the best skills coaches in the NBA. So he's gonna help me out today. We went through here, here, some fingertip work. I'll get now, campers. And now we're about to go figure eight. So you got a ball there if you want to jump in. Do you hear Seth? Hey coach Seth, thank you. Yes, glad to be here. How are you guys? Great. So you, you, we're right into the we're right into the finger figure eight. There you go. Go about 15 seconds here. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Good. Good. Good job, coaches. You guys see Dave, Dave in the background. Dave in the background makes everything run here. He's a guy who gets in here 5 a.m., does everything. Wow. So we don't play basketball if it's not for Dave. All right, let's go. We'll go same thing, but we'll reverse it. So we're coming from behind now. One, two, we'll get 15 seconds now. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good job, Dwayne. 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 Good job, Dway
three, two, good. Good job. Good, good job, campers. My guy Seth's gonna take us through the next uh, dribbling drill right here. Let's go for the next one. They have one. Okay. Let's go for the next one. Sorry, Seth, we can hardly hear you. Hardly hear me? Is that okay. better? Yeah, that's, that's a lot better. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do two crossovers. One, two. We're going to go two times through the legs. One, two. And then we're going to go two times behind the back. One, two. We're going to do that, and we're going to repeat it four times total. So you got two, two, and two, as much as you can, especially on the crossovers. Let's keep your eyes up. So we should be looking straight ahead. Don't want to look at the ball. So we're going one, two, one, two, one, two. And we're going to repeat that three more times. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Last time through. Fast as you can. One, two, one, two, up, one, Kaysen. two. Good job. Nice. Think we gotta speed it up. I'll, I'll be your player. I'll go on. Let's let's see if we can speed it up. All right, now Coach Chris is gonna go on. She's gonna try to go even faster. So we're gonna keep the speed up. Try to keep your eyes up if you can. Is it okay if I turn it over? It's good if you turn it over. If you lose the ball, that means you're working hard. Oh. Oh, good job, Darius. I see you speeding it up. Good. Oh, oh. Good job, Malik. Okay How fast can you go, ball. Malik? Oh, okay and my head's down. Okay, Elizabeth. Ah. Let's go, Elizabeth. There you go. Between the legs. Go ahead, try it. Don't be afraid. Oh, there you go. Good job. I saw you. <laughs> nice, Rachel. Let me see you do a full set, Rachel. There you go. Good try. Good job. Rachel, what's your sister? Who's your sister? Okay, good job. Let's go, Aaliyah. Gregory. Come on, keep trying. No stop. Kaden. Oh, Kaden is a pro. Good job, Kaden. Good job, Lavandre. Man, that's too easy for Lavandre. Just fine. Okay. Good job, Raquel. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's uh. Let's, we'll give. Let's do a few more. We'll do one more dribble combo, and then we'll move on to passing. We can do a little bit of like the balance stuff too. So, la last one. Last one for the dribble. Is uh. There we got one ball. Let's go. This, it, yeah, it's kind, it's kind of tricky, but all right, yeah, let's, let's stick with that. So we're going to go – we're going to go one cross through the legs behind the back, cross through the legs behind the back, cross through the legs behind the back. All right, so instead of – we went two each rep, we're just going to do one now. So slowly pick up your speed. So you got it right. You're cross through the legs behind the back. You're back to the front, cross through the legs behind the back. All right, let's see if I can uh, time me. Let's see what I can. Let's see if I can get. We'll go ten right now. Ten, right here. One. One. Two. Ah. Three. Four. Five. Good job, Kamari. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. There you go, Damani. Hey. Good job, Alex. Jermaine, good job. Where's Maya? Maya, don't worry about the camera. All right, now we're going to do, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to make it a little bit harder. If you guys have a little space to back up, we're going to do the same thing. Cross over between legs behind the back. We're going to walk forward. And then when you run out of space, now you go backwards. So the same dribbling, 
but you're having to move a little bit. Good job, Kamari. If you go back too far, you'll fall on the couch, so that's all right. Yeah, even if you just have a little space, just up and forward a little bit. Okay, Kaden. Anthony, let me see you get another rep in, Anthony. Isis, Iasis, yeah. Let me see you get a rep in Iasis. There you go. Good job, Dorian. I can't see you. Good job, Dion. Olanda, you on a water break again? Man, you must not have done your cardio homework last night. <laughs> Let me see you, Aiden. Go ahead, Aiden. Good job, Aiden. I see you. Good try. There you go. Nice. Um, Coach, I think your mic is muted. Let me... Yeah, you got to uh, let me. I think you got it. Yeah, there you go. Good work, Darius. Let me see one. Darius Pratt, man. Let me see one. Yeah. Oh, we see that's a lot of water breaks. That's good stuff. <laughs> Does everyone have a wall? where they can toss the ball at without getting in trouble? Probably not, or outside. Like if, are we able to work on passing? Yeah, some of them have a wall. They'll make it work. Uh, no, nah, let's uh... – Yeah, let's uh, – I mean, if – we'll do passing. If you can't uh, – if you don't have a wall, then you can just – kind of toss it to yourself and try to hold on to it. All right. So I'm going to be the wall. Step right. away from the windows. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be the, the passer. So where do you want the wall to be? Here? Uh. All right. So the first one we're going to do, go right hand dribble three times. Three hard dribbles. One, two, three. Throw it at the wall. It'll bounce back to you. Yep, one hand pass. One, two, three, pass. One, two, three, pass. One, two, three, pass. All right. Now we're going to go to the left hand. So we're going to have three hard dribbles with your left hand. Pass with the left hand. We want to be able to use both hands in everything we do. Right? So it's one, two, three, pass. One, two, three, pass. One, two, three, pass. So not only are you working on your left hand pass, but when the ball bounces back to you, trying to control it, right to a dribble again. Really want to work on all the dribbling and passing stuff, being able to use both hands. Good job, if you're, if you're passing to a relative, don't throw it too hard. <laughs> Break anything. There you go. Give me, give me a couple. All right, now we're going to go two crossovers pass. So, crossover, crossover, pass. Crossover, crossover, pass. Make sure you're starting with different hands. Start with your right hand. Start with your left hand. Pass. Crossover, crossover, pass. Crossover, crossover, pass. Crossover, crossover, pass. Full time, keeping your eyes up. Good. Good, yeah, if you don't have a wall, just catch it. Good job, Jerome. Good job, Tiro. Way to make it work, Dion.
Benjamin, I see you. Yeah, we could do some. Let's do some uh, form shooting. Good job. When you guys are, are ready to take a break, let's take one. Uh, let, we're going to go over some form shooting, and we're going to go over some of the balance stuff I was talking about, which, again, is so important, whether you're passing, dribbling, or shooting. Let's uh, give you a minute. Get a drink. Grab some water. I got mine. So I'm working so hard over here. <laughs> We got about uh, we got about 10, 15 minutes. We got players coming in soon, so we'll uh, again we'll finish up with some shooting and balance. But over this next week, like listen to all these coaches. Uh, they've been doing this a long time. It's their job. They really care about the game. And so if you want to get better, keep listening to these guys. Keep working on your skills. All right, I'm gonna look around. Everybody, everybody, ready again? We'll give you 30 seconds. You start as – you'd be the player, man. You got a better-looking jump shot, right? All right, everybody ready? All right, we're going to go over form shooting. So, let me get my – let me get – Seth, get in – get your feet in here. The ball back here so they can see your feet. Feet. I would guess most of you guys have shot the ball before. It's always important to have your right foot slightly ahead of your left. Be balanced, shoulder width apart. The power of your shot is going to come from your legs always. You'll see people who shoot straight up. It's good for a little bit. Like, maybe they feel comfortable. As they get tired and they're playing defense, the game goes on, they're going to start missing short. So we want to have good balance so that we can get some bend. You see Seth's got some bend right now in his legs. And then we always shoot the ball in one motion. Again, you're getting your power from your legs. You're shooting all the way up. You're extending your elbows in. So right now, we just want you to shoot. So the ball can land a couple of feet ahead of you. If you're shooting it right, your elbow's in, the ball's straight. If you have a line that you can shoot on or anything, the ball should be straight ahead if the elbow's in. Full extension. Again, we'll start from, we'll start from the top. Just practice your form. Again, we got the bend, and then it's one piece, elbow's in, hold the follow through. Why do we hold our follow through? We want, we want the rotation. We want the consistency of the same shot every time. Good shooters will tell you, you get a good follow through, the ball bounces off the rim differently. We get more makes, everyone's happy. Perfect. Perfect, let's do this for a little bit longer. I see some of you guys stop. Let me see. Kamari, man, what's up? You wanna shoot? Let's get some shots, Kamari. Well, that's nice. We got two people over here. Brian and Brandon, good work, fellas. Good. Good. Now, the next thing, we're just going to take it. We're gonna have Seth just spin it out to himself. Again, balance, step right into it, one, two. See people, when you go to, when you're coming off of screens, uh, when you're just running the space, looking to receive the catch, a lot of people try to hop into the shot. Let's make sure we're good with the one, two first. We're gonna spin and we're one, two into it. Again, we do this for consistency. We know if we get this foot around, we're going to be lined up to the rim. Good. Good. 
Let's take them the other way now. So let's have let's have you uh let's have you go here then. Spin it. Let's spin it. Let's take one dribble. And again we'll square up right foot. Good. It's all footwork. It's balanced. Again, we're adding one dribble, but it's the same shot. Good. 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 Let's go. Uh, you guys can all lay down right now, right? Yep. Yeah. So Seth, Seth's going to show you how you can just, you're watching games, you're watching cartoons, whatever you like to watch, you can still work on your game when you're on the floor. You got Seth lying down. Same shot as before. Elbow should be in, wrist back, follow through, and you should be able to see it spin. Every time you shoot it, you should get good rotation, the ball should see the ball spinning. Now the idea is this, we already went through the balance and your legs, find the power from your legs. But right now we're just working on that upper body. We're working on the arms right now, making sure we have the same shot every time. Consistency, follow through. Your wrist will start, your wrist, your arm will start getting a little tired, which is good. That's how you build the muscle memory. Good. Good. All right, everybody, take a break for a second. Last thing we're gonna do. You want to? You want to put me through the balance, or you want me to put you? All right. Cool. All right, we're gonna go over some balance stuff right now. So again, if you're good fix, if you're watching any of these playoff games, let me see the ball quick. If you're watching any of these playoff games right now. The best pl the playoffs become really hard. Defenders care a little bit more. They're stronger. There's more game plan involved. But the best players are still getting balanced whenever they make their move. So what we like to do when we warm up with our guys is really work on balance. So Seth, you take it right now. So let's have you get balanced. Let's have you go one on the left foot right now. Left foot right now. And we don't have a hoop, but I want you to extend and shooting from the left foot. So. With one up, we're going to make sure he's balanced. Now shoot it. Good. Again, you don't need a hoop, but the idea is that you get used to shifting your balance to the left foot. Let's if go. If you have a hoop, if you're at the park, you can still do the same thing and shoot it and really hold, not letting you try not to let yourself fall back down. Let's go out. Let's go right foot now. Same thing. Stay balanced. Give yourself a couple seconds. Good. Good. Go again. Balance. Again, the core is important. Let's move the ball a little bit. Make sure you can keep the balance as the ball is moving. This is something you don't need a hoop. You barely even need a ball for. It's to make sure you're balanced. And whatever you're doing day to day, like keep this in mind. Like you skateboard, uh, you play baseball, uh, you play soccer, whatever it is, like any sport, the balance and the core is so important. You see Seth just kind of testing himself. The more balanced you get, the more stable you're going to be offensively and defensively. Good. Now let's see, uh, let's see how advanced Seth really is. This time, this time we want him to just go between shifting. So we'll, we'll, have him, we'll have him on his left leg. We'll have him on his left leg, and then we'll just have him jump to his right. And again, balance is important the whole time. We'll go left to right. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Good. Let me get a shot, man. This is easier said than done, it looks like. Again, we don't play. We just tell. Here we go. Good. Stay balanced at all times. We got anybody sticking the landing? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, they're doing well. That's good stuff. Maybe a little harder? Yeah. Let's go. Uh, 
Yeah, let's go. Let's go here. And we'll just go here, back to the right. Seth's much better at it. Three? Let's go three. There's one, two, three. Good. 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 Now you see, like, we're talking about having balance, but in today's basketball world, too, a lot of people like to go one, two. So if you're making your move, finish your move to the hoop, this is the same idea of why balance is so important. You're here, you, you're able to push out. Seth, come guard me like you're coming over to trap the box. Boom. Now I'm by him. So again, it's not just for shooting purposes. It's the idea that we're balanced on our moves to the basket as well. Let's, uh, you got anything else you want to do on this? We'll do one, one more with the balance. Balance on one foot. You have to go down, touch the ball to the ground, come all the way up without letting your other foot touch. All the way down, touch the ground, all the way back up. One more, touch, all the way up. Now go another foot. Three times, touch the floor, ball above your head. Can't let your other foot's gotta stay in the air. One, two, three. Oh, that's good, that's good. Let's see what we got. All right. Um, appreciate you guys being here. Anyone have any questions, just type it in. Or if there's something else they want to see or they want to know or work on. Like, we've got a couple more minutes here. So, I'm just – Yeah, if you guys uh... – Why? Sorry about that. I thought y'all could hear me. If you have a question, go ahead and unmute your mic one at a time and ask your question. Uh, yeah, no, Seth was just saying that uh, just plyometrics in general. Go uh, online, look at plyometrics, but box jumps or anything you can jump on two feet, one feet, okay, one foot. Questions. What we have yep. to do basketball? What's your question, Aiden? Why do you have to do basketball? Why? Basketball. <laughs> Why do you have to do basketball? Yes. You don't have to do basketball. This is something you should do that's that's a good workout and that you enjoy. And if you don't, you should find your passion and do something else. That was my question. That's my question. Okay, anyone else? Can I see Stephen Curry? <laughs> he is not in the gym today. Unfortunately. Okay. Say hi. For the NBA. NBA. Is that who is the strongest player on the team? How do you get better at dribbling with your left hand? It's just repetition. It's just like good shooters. The more you work on it, I mean, I'm in a chair right now. The more you work on it, the more you rep it. Just have a ball. If you really love the game, there's always a, a time to get better. For a beginner. Hello? Okay, so ask your questions in the chat and then Coach DeMarco will answer them. Yeah, yeah. The, let's see. 
the best advice you could give me on basketball skills or going against other players. Uh, I can only speak to myself or guys we've had in here, but uh, the players you want to be great are just different. That means you're waking up earlier. That means, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't think you guys have basements, but in the Midwest we have basements. That means the lights were off. We were doing dribbling drills. We talk about keeping your head up. If, the, if it's dark, you have no choice. You can't see the ball anyway. So uh, it, it's just putting the time in. It's one thing to say, like, hey, how do I get better? Uh, how do I improve my game? And then you go and do something else all day. Uh, it's just not going to happen. I mean, some of us are blessed enough where you get the size and athleticism where that stuff can come later. Uh, but for the people who are really obsessed with the game, you're actually putting in the work every day. All you need is a ball. Um, and then I really, really recommend just watching the game. Uh, you know, there's been plenty of studies done about the importance of just watching and being able to pick up things. So the playoffs are on right now. If you don't have a TV or you got access to internet, you put something on YouTube, but there's always ways you can watch basketball. Uh, if you're short, how do you train yourself to shoot? A size doesn't matter when you shoot. You just got to create space. So again, ball handling, uh, working on your game. Like, you know, if you're short, you're probably quicker than everyone else. You got to use that to your advantage to create open opportunities. Uh, physiotherapist, go to school, catch a break. Uh, strongest shooter on the team, Stephen Clay. I'm not going to pick one. Uh, but yeah, anyone have anything else? Okay. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks, Seth Cooper, for coming on. Thanks, Coach Cooper. Thanks, Coach DeMarco. What's the name yeah. of the game? Absolutely. We appreciate you taking yep. time out no of problem. your early morning. Guys, it's 11.28 here. It's about 9, no, 8.28. 8. 8. 8.28 there. So we got yeah. Coach up early. But he's a coach, so he's always up anyway. So. Yeah. Y'all, thank him. I guess you can put your virtual thank yous in the chat. Um, and we'll move on to the next, to our next segment. Yeah, I've been an assistant coach six years. I'm not telling you who we're drafting. And <laughs> I do, no, thanks for having us. And uh, we look forward to being able to actually do a camp with everyone there. This is really difficult. Um, and just God bless everybody. I hope everyone's doing well over there. All right, so we'll see you in the Bahamas soon. <laughs> One day. All right, campers. Good job with participating. Um, take a, a minute, get some water. You got 20 seconds. And then we'll go into some fun facts about our campers before we head into our mental skills training with Coach Anton Francis. So take a few, a few seconds, get some water. Great job. I like the energy. Y'all are doing it, even though we are apart right now. We're still together. Okay, so. Yeah, we are ahead of schedule. Yeah, so we got five minutes before we go into our theme fundamentals. Dilem, sorry, Dilem, you said you love your life. Good job. Was that you at the Blazers Lakers game, Miss Director? Oh, no, I wish. <laughs> Have any of y'all been um, to any of the NBA games virtually? I know you can just like download Microsoft Teams and then uh, you can be at the game. Did any of y'all try it? Darius, you did? Cool, which game? Yeah, so if you, any of y'all wanna attend a game, go on to Microsoft, go to nba.com and follow the instructions. I believe you download the Microsoft Teams app and then you can be one of those persons that's in the virtual stand at the game. Lakers Clippers, Darius, cool. 
Did you see yourself on TV? Okay, Tyler's been to an actual NBA game. Dylan watches every game. That's awesome. <laughs> so Maya's mom plays PS4. Um, she, her mom plays in the NBA on the PS4. That's funny. Okay, so let's go through some fun facts. Fun facts. Hold on, I need to mute Rostin's mic. One second. Rostin, can you mute your mic? Actually, let me do this. Let's mute all. Okay, so moving along, Alex, you blow. <laughs> Alex is on the couch, laying down. All right, so some fun facts about camp. I don't know if this person's here today, but our youngest female camper is Bella Evantea. Bella, are you here? If you're here, Type in the chat so that we know that you're here. And she is five years old. So y'all give a virtual cap, a virtual clap to Bella. So Maya, if you need to leave, you're free to leave, my dear. All you gotta do is click leave. <laughs> Dilam, no. Bella, are you here? I guess Bella didn't make it to camp, but she registered. Our youngest male camper is Elijah Higgs, and he's also five years old. Elijah, are you here? Elijah, if you're here, type your name in the chat so that we can bring you up on the screen. Okay, if you're five years old, I want you to type yes in the chat. Oh, Elijah is here. Okay, Elijah. I'm gonna bring you up on the screen for one second. Elijah, you can go ahead and unmute your mic. You can turn on your camera too. Elijah, where are you? Leave your hand. Leave your hand so we can see. Hey, Elijah. Hey. <laughs> are, you, are you excited to be here? Yes. We're so happy to have you. What school do you go to? St. Lawrence. Oh, what grade are you in? One. Oh. And how long have you been playing basketball? Then play basketball, tennis. Oh, okay. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm. Police. A police? Yes. Okay, awesome. So guess what? You're so special, but just for being the youngest camper, you just want yourself <coughs> a free basketball. <laughs> I can tell. I can see the excitement dripping off of you. So we'll connect um, after camp on Friday, and I'll tell your parents how they can pick it up. Thank you. Thank you. But thank you for being here. All right. So next up, um, the tallest female. Let me see y'all in the chat. I want you to guess how tall you think the tallest female at camp is. What do you think their height is? Anyone know when this ends? Dorian, it ends at about one o'clock, but you're free to leave whenever you, whenever you want to. Six, five. 
No, we don't have any 6'5 females here. 5'9. Oh, Robert said 5'10. Yes, we do have a 5'10 camper. The tallest female campers are Antonisia Moultrie. She is 5'10 and she is 14 years old. Sound like she's going places, right? Is Antonisia here? Antonisia, if you're here, type in the chat so that we know you're here. Samaya, so you're not 5'10". Okay, Antonisia is here. You're going to pull her up on the screen so she can tell us a little bit about herself. Hey, Antonisia, show your camera. Oh. Good afternoon. I mean, morning. Hey, Antonisia, we can't see you. <laughs> Mama, yeah, you pick. Oh, my goodness. Anthony, you show your face. Okay. Yes. Okay. The, the f so, Anthony, what school do you go to? Saint Augustine's College. And what position do you play? Um, point guard and shooting guard. Okay, and tell the campus how long you've been playing and a little bit about yourself. I've been playing from since I was like four or five years old. Oh, uh, yeah. What else? Uh, who's your favorite basketball player? Um, I don't really, I don't really have a favorite basketball player. But I guess you could say John Quell. John Quell Jones? Mom. Um, Okay, awesome. And what are your, what do you want to do after you finish high school? Um, I want to go to college and get a degree in piloting. Oh, you want to be a female pilot. Awesome. Do you want to play basketball in college? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's awesome. So hopefully your basketball skills will get you that um, free college education that will lead to your piloting because becoming a pilot is expensive so any money toward that um, career will help. That's all. Thank you. And I think Anthony she has been coming to camp at least for the, for the last 10 years. She's been around a long time y'all and she is a phenomenal basketball player. She keeps working. Trust me she's going to accomplish everything that she talked about today. All right, Thank you. Anthony, see Thank you. All right, the next tallest female camper is Odisha Jones. Is Odisha here? She's also 5'10". Hello? Yes, I'm getting that information right now. Odisha, are you here? Would you like to consider calling us back? No. Okay, I don't think she's here. Now to the tallest male camper, Mario Forbes. Can y'all guess how tall Mario is? I don't see, is Mario here? Mario. 
Oh, Mario is here. Mario, I'm going to unmute you. You're going to tell the camp a little bit about yourself. And yeah, someone guesses height. Mario is, I'll let you tell them, Mario. Unmute your mic and show yourself, Mario. Bahamas Basketball Federation. Mario, I muted your mic. You have to, you have to unmute your mic. Mario? Mario, you, can, you gotta talk now that you unmuted your mic. <laughs> and turn on your camera. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mario isn't, oh, his mic isn't working. But anyway, Mario is 6'3", and he is 14 years old, I'm sorry, 13 years old, and he attends in Augustine's College. So Mario, keep working hard on your game, and it's no ceilings for you. No limits. It's no, no limits to how far you want to go. And this isn't only for tall people, y'all. Don't get me wrong, but I just had to pick, you know, a fun element for camp. Um, what about Jason McCauley? Is Jason here? Yes. Hello. Yes, I've already assigned the, the large meeting to the bds.basketball at outlook.com. You, you can go ahead and check it, and it is now up to 500. All right, thank you. Okay, Jason is here. Jason? No, Jason, let me unmute your mic. No, no other questions. Uh, trying to find you, Jason. Okay, there you are. Are we all set now? Afternoon. Yeah, Good afternoon, Jason. <laughs> so actually, Jason is our tallest camper, but Mario was the tallest camper in his age group. He's 13 years old. He's 6'4". But Jason is actually, tell him your height, Jason. Um, 6'5". He is 6'5". Um, and how old are you? 16. 16 years old. Wow. So what school do you go to? I go to St. George's High in Freeport. Okay, awesome. How long have you been playing basketball? Um, well, in school, I would say like two years. Um. Wow. But I started going to camps and stuff uh, 2015, mm -hmm. so five-year process, I guess. Five years I've been interested in basketball. Wow, but you just really started playing two years ago in school. Yes, um, yeah. That's, that's crazy. So you're there with uh, Coach Sears. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you have good hands. So, <laughs> uh, what position do you play? I play center. Okay. Uh, yeah. How long have you been 6'5"? Did this, did this happen overnight or? Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> um, I I was 6'4 for like the longest. Um, st um, 2016, I believe. Mm -hmm. 2015, I actually shot up and had a growth spurt and I grew like six inches. Wow. And, um. <laughs> I was 6'3 at that point, but then, oh yeah, 14, no, 13, 13, I was 13, so, um, but I was 6'4 from 2018, and then I just started inching up, like, in centimeters. <laughs> oh, um, so so like you, you measure yourself frequently. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on the second one, so waiting on the second goat's bird, so, okay. yeah. <laughs> Are you still developing your ball handling skills? Because, I mean, 6'5 is still 
not that tall for a center. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, in high school, well, where I'm at, I would, I guess, I would be considered one of the tallest. But um, with me being six five and wearing a size eighteen shoe, what? um, <laughs> I I was put in that position because you know I gotta, I could would be able to um, work that position. Right, so. Okay. Well, I'm so I'm glad that you signed up for camp. I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you're enjoying it. Yes, I have. Ma are you enjoying it? Yes, ma'am. For sure. This, today is my first day, but um, yeah, it's nice. It's nice okay. to get a little workout. Okay, awesome. So make sure you stay for the rest of the week, and we have some more exciting coaches. I know Coach Sears will be on. I think tomorrow or Thursday. Yeah. So make sure you stay locked in. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and. Oh, all of the, the, the persons that we mentioned today, I'll be sure to connect with you after camp so that you can get your prize. <laughs> okay? All right. All right, so moving along, we have up next. Let me pull up that screen. I'm going to skip through that. Medical skills training with Coach Chantel Penn. So let me get her set up. So make remember campers, this is the session where you get to win prizes. Um, not only do we have basketballs, but we have some nice Falling by the Beach gear that you'll be eligible for. That's the shorts and the jersey. I see some some of you already who've been to our camps. You have your uniforms, so make sure you stay locked in. So that's the orange one. Um, we have some gift certificates from some of our sponsors, so make sure you stay locked in. We got some prizes and surprises for you. So Coach Penn, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Let me put on my camera. I'm just waiting to put on my video. Okay. Morning, everyone. So my name is Chantel Penn, and I am the CEO of the Blueprint Academic Coaching. And today I'm going to take you through your mental skills training. All right, so you could do the next screen. So today I'm going to talk about the power of the process, reframing success to triumphs in the process, encouraging the behavior and not the outcome. All right, so when you're going through the process, one of the biggest things you need to develop or what you're going to develop through the process is confidence. All right. Okay. And confidence comes from knowing you've done everything that entitles you to, to succeed along with preparation. Confidence is a building process that involves experiencing success in the process. So as you go through the process of learning different skills, you're going to gain confidence over time. Confidence doesn't come right away. So it's something you're going to develop over time. And then when your definition of success involves a set of behaviors that you can control, it's much easier to tackle the process confidently. All right, so I'm going to go through some encouraged behavior versus discouraged behavior when it comes to certain skills or certain aspects of the game. So missed shots. I know this is a big thing for kids. So you want to focus on more so the type of shots you're taking versus the amount of shots you're taking. 
So instead of focusing on the shot percentages or your shooting percentages, you want to refocus your goal around the kind of shots you're taking versus the amount of shots made. So I know some kids, they like to say, well, I made 50 shots, but you only probably made like two out of the 50 shots. So some questions you need to ask yourself is, was the shot a high percentage attempt? Jason, please stop. Sorry, Chantel. <laughs> Kassara, please stop. I'm gonna kick you out of camp. Was the shot made after a ball reversal? And then the last thing you wanna ask yourself You can keep going, I'll, I'll do the slide. <laughs> oh, okay. Your next question you want to ask yourself was the shot a great decision based on your set of skills? So, you know, you have a lot of kids when they're playing basketball, they like to shoot certain shots, but it's not necessarily in their skill strength. So you need to focus more on shots that are in your strength range rather than just focusing on just shooting the ball aimlessly. So you want to focus on your shot selection rather than shooting percentage. This is one of the many ways of building your confidence. Another one is turnovers. So you want to focus more on limiting the turnovers versus then the amount of turnovers that are being made. Turnovers are going to happen, but if you could limit your turnovers, that's much better than focusing on the amount of turnovers that you're going to be making during the game. Uh, for some of the younger kids, you want to tell them what a turnover is? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so a turnover is if you have the ball, and for some reason, um, you get a five second count for holding the ball for five seconds, or if you're bringing the ball down the court and the other team is pressing and they trap you, you get the eight second count that causes a turnover. Um, if the ball is stolen, I mean, it's a steal, but it's still a turnover too. So those would be what turnovers are. So if you lose the ball and it goes out of bounds, the other team gets it, that's a turnover. So with the turnovers, instead of focusing on your turnover percentage, you want to refocus your goal on how to prevent the turnovers or how to limit your turnovers. So these are three questions you could ask yourself. You could ask, ask yourself, was the pass being forced? Were you being aggressive enough? Um, another question you could ask yourself is, am I attacking the pressure being given? So if the other team, if their defense is very aggressive, are you being aggressive in the offense as well? Or are you panicking and folding up and then you get the turnover? Or you, a next question you could ask is what is causing the eight second or the five second count? Those are questions you could ask. So if it's where a team is pressing you, you find you will have to figure out ways to get the advance the ball up the court or why are you picking up the ball so quickly to get the five second count? So your focus needs to be more on limiting the turnovers rather than focusing on the turnover percentages. The next one is fouls. So fouls, you want to focus on limiting your fouls versus, um, on, versus the fouls that are being given during the game. Fouls are going to happen. You know, basketball is a contact sport, so fouls are going to happen regardless. But if you can limit the fouls, it'll be much better for you and your team. Remember, if you have questions at any time, put them in the chat, and I'll be sure to answer them right after. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll ask them after. So like I said, instead of focusing on the foul percentages, try to refocus your goals on how to limit the fouls being given during the game. So these are three questions you can ask yourself. Yeah, so figure out how to stop hacking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can ask yourself, um, am I reaching for the ball? You know, when you're being lazy, and you just don't want to play defense, so you start to reach for the ball, that causes fouls. So you could ask yourself, am I reaching for the ball? Another question you could ask is, am I fouling out of frustration? You know, sometimes the refs, you get upset with the refs, or you're frustrated because you're losing, so you just make silly decisions and you foul out of frustration. So that's another question you could ask. And then the last question you could ask yourself is, why am I always in foul trouble? 
And that's a personal question you need to ask yourself, why am I always in foul trouble? So these are just three questions you can ask yourself when it comes to files. So your focus, you need to focus more on the last, I don't know, screen, my screen. You want to focus more on how to limit the files being given rather than the amount of files during a game. Anyone here ever been fouled out before? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you too, Kazen? Okay. <laughs> Dorian, you look like you got a little bit of hack in you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said they get five files in two minutes. What? Five files in two minutes? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sound like they need to play rugby. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is losses, losing. So you wanna focus less on blaming people or blaming yourself and focus more on learning from the loss. And I know no one likes to lose, so it could be a bit rough sometimes. So instead of blaming others or yourself for a loss or being down about a loss and focusing on the loss for like 500 years, you know, you want to move past it and see how you can improve for the next game. So three questions you could ask yourself after a loss is what did I do or didn't do to, to, contrib to contribute to the loss itself? So maybe you didn't play at your best, you know, or maybe the team didn't play at their best. So those, you could ask yourself, like, what did I do or what didn't I do to contribute to the loss? Another question you could ask is, how can I or my team learn from this loss? You learn more from losing a game than you learn from winning a game. So winning games are, are great. Everyone's excited, but you don't learn a lot from winning. You learn more from losing than from winning. And then a third question you could ask yourself is, did I play at my full potential? You know, sometimes when you lose, um, it's hard to look inward and ask yourself, you know, did I really play at my full potential or did I just play at 50 or 40%? So that is something, these are three questions you can ask yourself when it comes to losing a game, instead of focusing and putting the blame on somebody else. So your, your goal for losses is to focus more on how to, what's the last piece? Focus more on how to come back better and stronger for the next game instead of focusing on the loss itself. So the, these are just some things I wanted to talk about when it comes to mental um, skills and dealing with the process of it. Going through the process, because the process can be very hard. You know, everybody likes to go from point A to point B, but then they forget the middle piece, getting from point A to point B. So, um, I'm going to go to the question and answer segment so y'all could win some prizes. My first question is for five to seven, right? The age group five to seven? Yeah. So what should your focus be on when shooting? What is one of your focus, what, what is one of the things you should focus on when you're shooting? All right, com I see somebody put confidence. Okay, Benicio. So when you get your answer, let me know who it is, Chantel, okay. and I'll record it. Okay, just five through seven. What was the question? Um, I see someone put as a case in. They put what kind of shot you're taking. K-A-I-Z-E-N. Okay. Great job, Kazen. You just won yourself a basketball. All right, my next question is for the next age group. What should be your goal when it comes to turnovers? What should be your goal when it comes to turnovers? And this is eight to 10 year olds. Eight to 10. What should be your goal when it comes to turnovers? All right, so is this Anth 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 Quonique Pedigan? Yeah. Uh huh. Anthony Pedigan? Right. Mm -hmm. They put you should try to limit it. I Good job, Anthony. 
Yes, definitely try to limit turnovers. You don't want to just give the team the next, give the other team the ball. Right. And then for the next age group, that's what, 11 to 15? 11 to 13. 11 to 13? Mm -hmm. What should be your goal when it comes to fouls? Okay, this is Keyshawn Roll. Let's focus on how to limit your fouls. Okay, Keyshawn, good job, Keyshawn. And then for the last age group, this 15 to 19, I'm um, 14 to 19, sorry. Mm -hmm. What is one question you can ask yourself after? 14, 14 to 17, sorry. Okay. No, 14 to 17. Okay, oh, 14 to 17? Mm -hmm. Oh, what is one question you could ask yourself after a game loss? Uh, I saw someone. All right, so it's Maya Hanfield. Mia mm -hmm. Hanfield or Maya Hanfield? Maya. Yeah, Maya, she answered first. What was her answer? Maya said... What did I do to contribute? How to learn from the loss? The loss. Yeah, great job, Maya. And then ages five to seven, eight to ten, down to thirteen, fourteen. No, sorry, it's fourteen to sixteen, and now seventeen to nineteen. Okay, so I didn't have a question for them, but I'll find a question. <laughs> I got the age groups mixed up. Um, what is the Biggest part of, I can't think of a question. Let me think of a question. Five seconds. I'm sorry. So, Kazen and, oh, Anthony. Size, um, confidence. What is the most important part? Um, of encouraging the behavior besides confidence. What would be the most important part of it too? Going through what? Oh, an wow. eye. Okay. No. Brian said losses. Losses. No. Maybe I'm asking the question wrong. Yeah, what right. was the question? The power of the process. Last name is this is Denea Malcolm. Yes. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> I asked besides confidence, what is the most important part of encouraging behavior? Oh, awesome. Going through the process. All right. So does anyone have any questions for Coach Penn? If you have questions, now is the time to put them in the chat. And congratulations to our winners. We have Kazen Dorset. Anaya, can you type your last name in the chat so that we have that information? Um, Keyshawn Roll, Maya Henfield, and Danae Malcolm. And I'm just waiting on Anaya's last name. If y'all want to grab a snack, a nice healthy apple or something during this time, you can go ahead. <laughs> oh, Anthony, Anaya DeVoe. Okay. So we got you recorded and we'll be in touch with you on Friday for your prize. Sorry, Kazen. Can you put the phonetics in there for me <laughs> so that I can pronounce your name correctly? Or should I unmute you so you can tell me how to say it? Is it Kaizen? Well, thank you so much, Coach Penn. Uh, You're welcome. We appreciate your time. And Coach Penn is a, a coach, y'all. She's also a coach. She coached some basketball on, on, on the court, but she also coaches uh, student athletes um, outside of the court as well. So make sure you follow her on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, the Blueprint Academic Coaching, yes. Life Coaching, yes. 
So make I sure post you stuff every three days and I give you tips to help you prepare for the upcoming school year. Time management, organizing, study tips, everything. Yeah, so make sure you check out. Sarah said if she get a snack, it won't be an apple. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are funny. Okay, thank you, Coach Penn. All right, so you're welcome. Time. Enjoy the rest of the camp today. Bye bye. All right, so moving right along. Up next, we have Coach Joette Fernando, um, who is a former senior women's national basketball team member, and she's also the team manager of our Under-17 Skills Challenge national team. So she'll be speaking to us about leadership, because we definitely want you all to develop as strong leaders, not only on the court, but off the court also. So let me get her situated and we'll move right into that. Okay, Coach Joe, are you there? Hello? Let me try this again. Afternoon, afternoon, afternoon. Hi. Uh, let me turn it down a little. <laughs> All right, I mean, I can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, good afternoon. So, today, you ready, Rella? Go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, today's topic is, is the separator. Am I coachable? So, when you see this topic, I want four persons to type in the chat and tell me what comes to mind when you see am I coachable? Coach Joe, any, you want any, to, four, any four. Coach Joe, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I can, I can. So, my name is Joe Fernando. Um, I'm, like she said, a former national team player. I was the team manager for the under-17 skills challenge um what else i can tell you i'm also a medical student so i'm a student at the uek campus in barbados um so i'm your future doctor, doctor. so when you guys when you guys get older i got you um what else um i have a dream of specializing in sports medicine so if you guys become pro and you need like the orthopedic doctor to show you, you know, hopefully you guys don't break anything, but if you tear anything, anything like that, I got you. So that's a little bit of, oh. Yeah. So Coach Joe is but I see. One, of, one of our model student athletes. Um, she started playing when she was a kid. She was a camper at Bowling by the Beach, I believe, and we started as well. And now she is one of the old heads. She came back a few years ago mm -hmm. as a coach. Uh, she is, she's just a hard worker all around. Um, a true example of if you work hard, great things will happen. Uh, she, she was one of those athletes. She didn't get recruited right out of high school, but she kept working on a game, working on a game. And I think maybe a year after she got a scholarship to college. She was a college student athlete. Um, just continue to work hard. Anything you ask her to do on the court, she, she's willing to do. Has the opportunity to be a part of the staff. Uh, when uh, we played in, what was that, US Virgin Islands. And again, just always a leader, um, not only on the court, but off of the court as well. So someone you can truly count on. And fun fact, uh, I needed someone to drive with me from, where's that? 
Georgia to Florida. <laughs> and she was a ride or die. She got in the car. We drove for about, I don't know, eight, eight to ten hours or something crazy like that. And she was just there you with me. from Atlanta to Tennessee to Florida. Wow. From Atlanta to Tennessee to Florida. Yeah. So we were on the road together. So that's a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Coach Joe. <laughs> Okay, okay, I see everyone was typing away in the chat. Let me see. Ooh. How far? Ooh, it's a lot of answers. Let's see. Um. Okay, okay, I see. Willing to learn, yes. Take correction, yes. Listen and take advice from others. Yes, yes. Willing to try new mistakes and constructive criticism. Can be a coach. Hmm, interesting. Positivity. Yes, all of these are right. Give yourself a, a, a clap because you were right. So you can go to the next slide, Rello. You can skip past that. Okay, so being coachable is the ability to correct, to make immediate corrections to any given feedback, or it's the ability to be taught or trained to do something with ears. So all of those answers in the chat was correct. So let me give you an example of being coachable. During a playoff game, I know this from experience. So during a playoff game, your coach tells you to correct your placement on defense, which is very important. So if you fix your placement or not, determines if you're coachable. And this is the separator. So if you're that person that doesn't fix what you need, then boom, someone comes, score a basket, and you lose the game. But if you fix your stance on your placement on defense, boom, the person can't score and you keep the win. So this is what separates you from being coachable and not coachable. Next slide. So these are some importance of being coachable. It helps a lifelong growth and takes you throughout life. So it doesn't only work like when you're on the court or playing a sport. It works when you're um, at your job. Your employers like to know that you're coachable, that you can be taught anything and willing to be teach. <laughs> Maybe it's cool. This for the future. <laughs> for the future. For the future. As well as your teachers. Your teachers want to know that you're able to be coachable. So, you know, this is a lifelong goal. It separates you from another. So during, you know, if you want to make a team or if you're trying out for the team, the coach want to see that you're coachable and you can be approached and the mistakes you make, that you can change them right away just for the betterment of you. It improves your skills and assists you in getting noticed by coaches and assists with accountability and leadership skills. And it's the secret to achieving your goals. So, so if you're coachable all of these home, things sorry if you're coachable at home, I, no i was giving them a a, a nugget there if being coachable at oh, home, okay. like when your parents tell you to do something make an adjustment and instead of having an attitude and you know shrugging your shoulders stomping up the steps slamming your door because you have to wash the dishes do it with a great attitude that's being coachable uh, if your parents tell you to wash the dishes and you leave half of the food on the plate and still put it on the drain and they say, come on, wash the dishes properly and you just do it with a good attitude and fix it, that's being coachable too. So make sure you be coachable, not only when you're at school and on the court, but when you're home as well. <laughs> yeah, it takes you throughout life. Next slide. So these are the things that you can control. Maintaining a positive attitude regardless of the situation. So negativity is like a contagious disease. Uh, very similar to COVID. 
So if you if you are negative, it spreads throughout throughout your team and it brings down the hopes and the spirit to your team. So you have to support your team because you are all in it together, working hard towards the goal. And the goal usually is to win. And having a good attitude and working hard is expected as any member of the team. So when I was in college, we had the saying before any game, we had the saying, we're all we got, we're all we need. So it's basically showing that it's a team effort and everyone that surrounds you on the team should be given their best effort because we are all we got and we are all we need to get the win. And, to, and you become like a family, you know, you become family to your, your teammates and your coaches, you know, so that's one. And then another is giving your best efforts at all times. Giving your all is putting your heart into it and never letting up. So, for example, if you, you know, you down, what, 10 during a game and you know you believe you 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 lose the game but if you give your all and you put your heart into it that 10 could go to plus 10 on your side and this aspect could change a losing outcome to a win so it can change and it can change attitudes and increase the spirit to your team so if you keep that positivity and you keep giving your best effort your team could switch around and a loss could turn into a win so and another thing is, no matter the outcome, if you give your best effort, you will never regret, have a regret after the game. So you would not, you would never, I could have, I should have, I would have. Because, you know, if you give your all, you don't have no regrets after the game. You just see everything that you need to work on, everything that you need to change, but you won't have any regret, regrets. And at the end of the day, you don't want that feeling of having regrets of, oh, if I had done this, if I had done that, you know, you have to give your best effort at all time. Okay, so now it's question time. So, hold on, what are the ages again? Five to seven, eight to 10. 11 to 13, 14 to 16, and 17 to 19. Okay, let's go to 5 to 7. This question is for you. Can you give me in the chat one importance of being coachable? So why is it important to be coachable, youngsters? You can see the responses, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So whenever you see it, just let me know. Okay. All right. Good try. So my, you can log off. Joy, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm looking through the chat. I'm waiting on that one answer. Okay, give them some encouragement. Okay, so. Well, re refresh you got, the question. Um, so previously, I have to I told you like four important things. No, five important things in being coachable. What were they? Your camera's off. Too. Oh. Mm. All right, give them a hint and then see if they can come up with the other three. Um, hmm, let's see, let's see. So, once you're coachable, what happens like if you're trying out for a team or something anything close to that anyone ah let's see i'll just go for the closest 
And I'll give this one to, where did it go? Where did it go? Horatio Milo. Horatio Milo. All right, good job, Horatio. What was his answer? To have a good mindset. Okay, and what was the answer you were looking for? So the four, the five ones were to help with lifelong growth and take you throughout life. It separates you from another person. Um, improves your skills and insists with being getting noticed by coaches. Assists with accountability and leadership skills. And it's the secret to achieving your dreams. Just turn five and seven. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Oh. Uh, right, so, okay, next question. Um, eight to ten? Yeah. Okay, since I already said it just now, someone from eight to ten could give me another one. Okay, okay, okay. We could scratch that. Give me the best meaning of being coachable from what I said. Let's go eight to 10 year olds. Well, Dyrum Clark gave me a message privately and he said to have a positive attitude. Okay. I like that one. What's the name? A Dyrum Clark. Oh, no, 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 that may say, no, I don't know. That says Dilium, Dilium. Oh, that's Dilium Clark. Okay, so Dilium Clark. Yes. Okay, good job, Dilium. Next age group. What's the next age group? 11 to 13. 11 to 13. So give me an example. Someone give me an example of being coachable. Eleven to thirteen. So like an example, like you know how I gave you an example of a game or anything like that, like a situation, a whole situation. Someone give me an example like that. Sarah said, when your coach corrects you and you listen. Yep. I like this one, doing the dishes without attitude. All right, who said that first? Kishon Roll. Well, Koyo Keto type that before him. Hmm? Koyo Keto type that before he did. He said, what? Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's Koyo Keto Roll. All right. Good job, Koyo Keto. And. Uh, Okay. And the next age group. Um what is what does it mean to be uh how can I put it? This is so, 14 through 17. 14 to 17. So when I say separator, what do I mean by you know, separator? What did I discuss and say about that? I'd give this one to Leonice Benaby, being able to stand out from others. Leonice? Yes, Leonice Benaby. Uh, 
Leonice, can you type in? Oh, I see it. Leonice. Good job, Leonice. The separator is being able to stand out from others. Good job. And 18. Well, 17 through 19. 18? 17 through 19. Oh, 17 through 19. I have to give a good question for them to see if they were paying attention. Hmm, let's see. Let's see. Mm. No, Dominic, hmm. you didn't win a free ball today. Not yet. We still have some more questions that you'll be able to answer. Okay, I give this question. What is the secret to being coachable? Where does it, what does it help you do? So what does the, what does being coachable help you to do? Well, Brian Roll got it right away. Improve the game. All right, good job, Brian. Way to pay attention. All right, so our winners okay. for the leadership skills session are Ratio Miller, Dilem Clark, Koyo Kito Roll, Lenise Benaby, and Brian Roll. Good job. So let's thank Coach Joette Fernanda for her time and giving you that wonderful session on how to be a better leader. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate you. All right, thanks, Joe. All right, moving along to our next session. Back to some on the court stuff. Um, back building basketball IQ, which will be presented to you by Coach Anton Francis. Coach Anton is the assistant head coach of the Bahamas Under-17 Junior Women's National Team and the Senior Women's National Team. He's the head coach of AF Adley Junior High School um, Junior Boys Team. So he's representing the Tigers. He's also the CEO of the Bahamas Basketball Concepts, Basketball Training and Development Bulldogs, and the CEO of Concept Media. So he is a busy man. He, he coaches, he has basketball management companies, so again, he's here to share his wealth of knowledge and information with you. Um, he's been around the game for a long time. He's not old, but he's been around a long time. I remember when I was uh, in high school, Coach Anton, he would be on some of the basketball trips that I went on uh, with C.I. Gibson. And he's just always been such a great supporter, um, someone that you can relate to. Um, even as a kid, I mean, he's very relatable, just always made you feel comfortable, um, just always someone that could boost your confidence, just an all-around great guy. So stay tuned and listen to what he has to say. Let me get him set up um, with the, let me get him unmuted so that he can start his presentation with you. Coach Francis, you can go ahead and take the floor or the mic. <laughs> Okay, just making sure that everybody can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome, awesome. And it's great to be here and be a part of this initiative and share knowledge with our basketball youth. And today, my presentation is going to be on basketball IQ. And having a basketball IQ is very important. And it has to deal with, you can move to the next slide. Developing or having a high basketball IQ means you are using the fundamentals and skills you have learned about basketball, along with your life skills and personal experiences to play the game the right way. And playing the game the right way is very important because it will help to catapult your increase your chances of making it further in basketball. Having a high basketball IQ means recognizing when you should use a skill or make a particular play assisting teammates with pointers about situations in the game, also learning from both when you have successful situations and when you fail. Also very importantly, having the right attitude that means sportsmanship, listening and accepting criticism very well. You know, we've heard a lot about having the right attitude between all of the other coaches that spoke. Um, Coach Fernanda just now spoke about it, Coach Penn spoke about it, and some of the other presenters 
spoke about it in the previous day. So that's also, that's very important. One of the things that's additionally important is accountability. Now, for some of y'all who don't know what accountability means, there's another word that comes along with that means accepting responsibility. Acknowledging when you made a mistake and own it up to it and making the necessary adjustments. These are just a few of the items and there are many more that players develop over their time of training and learning the game. One of the good things about improving your basketball IQ is being able to learn from everybody around you. You can apply so many different situations that you may go through in life to add to what you may learn or to improve your basketball IQ. It means being observant and soaking in the information and you see what those around you are doing right and what they're doing wrong and making those situations your own. So that if you see somebody that does something and they have success with it, doing the same thing or doing it similar will also improve your basketball IQ. As well as you see what others may be doing wrong and understand that's something that you should not do. Examples of people that you can learn from, coaches, your trainers, other basketball players, teachers, parents, and many other persons around you. There are also a lot of resources that you can get, get you can help to improve your basketball IQ. And I know a lot of y'all probably do this stuff. You go on the internet and you look at YouTube, FIBA basketball, NBA basketball. You can also go online and get books about youth sports development and also teach yourself about the basketball rules. There's also a lot of instructional videos by private sports developers. Like there used to be a very popular one back in the day called Better Basketball. That's probably been a little bit outdated, but some of the things are still very relevant. And you can always go online and see a lot of things in basketball development, especially YouTube. That's a very, very good resource for you to go and get basketball information from. Also, you know, everybody, we also watch basketball. You also watch basketball in high school, college, WNBA, NBA, FIBA games, and whatever your favorite streaming providers are. I see Delano Royal asked who I was. If you missed the beginning of the slide, my name is Coach Francis, and I'm one of the Bahamas national team coaches, and I also coach basketball at AF Adley Junior High School. As well, I do also have a private basketball program. Basketball has many fundamental and skills that are learned and need to be perfected over the time that you train and you develop them. I'm going to ask you a few questions about basketball and items that involve the sport. The questions are, geared, are not going to be geared only towards the physical part of basketball IQ, but also along the lines of thinking the mental parts of basketball. I have a few questions and my first question is going to be to some of the, to the five and seven year olds. And I need somebody to be able to tell me a type of basketball pass. I need about three types of basketball passes. So the first person in the ages of five to seven that can give me two or three types of basketball passes will win this prize. Yeah, I know that's one. Come on, two or three. Okay, let's go for three. Let's just call it three. Okay, so okay, that's well, that's be Taj and Dante. That's right. Taj and Dante. Chest, Chest pass, pass overhead, overhead pass. pass, and bounce pass. Very good. Good job, um, Taj and Dante. All right, so let's move to the next question. The next group, the next question is going to go to the ages eight to 10. Name two reasons a player should use the backboard to shoot the ball. <laughs> Ratio, are you still in this age category? Are you eight to 10 or are you five to seven? <laughs> Name two reasons a player should use the backboard to shoot the ball. Okay. 
Okay, Kaizen. Kaizen actually said something that's probably kind of good, or Kaizen, it would go in easier. That's kind of the right answer, but I'm gonna give it to, to Clark. I think that's Dylan Clark. I can't pronounce it. He says, it helps to get a better shot. That's one. And I think we're gonna give it to, 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 to the person that said to get a better shot. That would be Clark, Dylan Clark, or I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Dylan Clark, to help to get a better shot. Okay. So we're going to give that one to Dylan Clark. The next question is going to be for the ages 11 to 13. One second. So Dylan Clark. Name a type of ball handling move to elude a defender. Okay, I saw somebody, everybody's saying the crossover, and that is one. I'm going to ask everybody, I need two. Let me give me two moves. And you have to type both of them in your message. So you ask the crossover is one. So if you're going to answer me again, I need two moves in the same answer. I need your answer in this, I need everybody to put your answer in the same text. Brian and Brandon said behind the back through the legs. Is that one move or two moves? Because <laughs> then I saw Coach Coach DeMarco today was giving them some advanced training crossover between the leg and behind the back. <laughs> All right, so when you see the, the answer you're looking for, let me know. Okay, looks like I'll, I'll give it to Brian and Braden Carey. Uh, Javon, what you know about the Sham God crossover? <laughs> Brian and Braden, which one is 11 through 13? Oh, Brandon? Okay, Brandon Carey. Brandon Carey, okay. Now we go to the next age group, um, 14 through 16. And I think the question is, can you post the question up for me, please, Jarrell? Right, if a teammate can't pass the ball to an open teammate, what can you do to help your teammate? You don't want him to get a turnover. You don't want to just stand around. What are you going to do? If a teammate can't pass the ball to an open teammate, what can that teammate do to help? Someone said go to the ball. These messages came up so fast. You think Brian said go to the ball? Let me go back. Who's the first one says, okay. Sanchez Lewis was actually the first person to indicate it. And that's one of the answers is to go to the ball. Okay, good job, Sanchez. Now I saw some other answers that says, um, go and set a screen and stuff like that. It depends on the situation, and this is where you have to use your basketball IQ. If that teammate who wants to pass the ball, it may you may assume that he's already picked the ball up, so you can't really go and set a screen anymore. The idea is to try and get open. You can communicate and tell them to pass the ball or show them the open man. You may be able to call a timeout, however, it depends on which basketball you're playing. In FIBA, the basketball will be playing the Bahamas, you can't call a timeout on a live ball. Meaning if you are on the court and the ball is in play, you cannot call a timeout whilst the ball is in play. 
However, in American basketball, you can call the timeout at almost any time on the floor, provided that you do have a basketball, that you have the basketball in your possession. You can call a timeout. Sanchez, what was your last name? You can type that in the chat. Okay, now the next question is to the 17 to 19. Sanchez Lewis, okay. Now, this question, what does it mean to be coachable? Coach Penn and Coach Fernando went over this in the previous two sessions, so hopefully you were tuned in during those sessions to be able to give us some examples of what it means to be, to be coachable. So 17 to 19, the first person that gives me a brief couple, a couple words about what it means to be coachable. So I see Brian Roll and Danae Malcolm. Lovato. No. Okay. And the and the real the answer that I want kind of came really from the name Malcolm, and if that's the name Malcolm that I know, she's a junior national team player. Janae, that's cheating. <laughs> I expect you to know this. <laughs> so Danae, Danae, she gave the actual phrase that I really wanted. Okay. being able to accept the feedback and make 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 immediate correction all of these are very good answers listen and have a positive attitude and there was someone that gave an input just before um Danae, and they also gave a correct answer but it wasn't the specific answer that i wanted to hear okay good job again Danae. brian you have to talk to Danae. she might reason with you <laughs> <laughs> I saw someone, I gave another answer for the previous question about getting open. They say cut. And that's from Irvin Wilson. And that's another good answer as well. You want to cut and get in position, get open. Now we have... Um, so Irvin, um, because you gave that uh, a good answer, we'll still slide you in for a prize. Awesome. We have two bonus questions. So Irvin Wilson... And this one is open to the floor, I guess, um, Coach Durrell? Yeah. That was and which one do we have up first? Okay. When a teammate misses a layup, what's a positive response you can give to them? Or what could you do as, as, a, in, in, as, as a response? Okay, I'm trying. These answers came up so fast; it just <laughs> popped up and, and and filled up the the the, the chat box so fast. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to look in to see. Yeah, great job at the participation campus. Okay, Brian Roll said to catch the boards, and I guess he means go and get the rebound, and that is very much important. One of the items that I would have said. So I guess we're going to give it to, to Brian. Danae, okay. you gave also a very good answer because you want to get your teammate to keep that positive attitude and you want to encourage them, hey, don't worry about that one, just try and get the next one. But because Brian came in first with his answer, catch the board. One of the things I always tell my players about this particular situation is when you see your teammate is going to the basket and making a layup or say, for instance, on a fast break, don't always assume that he's going to make that, or he or she is going to make that layup, but you always got to follow your teammate. You never know. Something can happen. They could twist their ankle. They could slip down. The ball could just, um, they can lose the ball. And because they're going up for that layup and they miss, you'd be right there to get that rebound, which is an offensive rebound, and put the ball back in, and you gave two stats. You rebounded the ball, plus you scored. 
you're always following your teammate, even if there's someone that can make the that could, that you might think that would always make that basket or can break that basket. You always follow them and try to put the ball in. Yeah. So that's Brian Roll. And the next question, the last bonus question. What does it mean to have a next play mentality? Talked about that yesterday. Nefer, you can you can leave whenever you want to, but you're gonna end at around one or so. Okay, let me see. When it says to have the next play mentality, Johnny, not exactly, not always to say, but think of another move as such per se. That is also a good part of the basketball IQ, however, not necessarily with regards to the question that was asked. Malik Martin said to be focused on the next play. On the next pay, I think you meant to say the next play. Now for right, Mamba mentality. You can't ever go wrong without, without having the Mamba mentality. Danae, these answers are all right. I, I, I can't, you can't get all the prizes, Danae. <laughs> that would have been like three or four. <laughs> So who you want to give that one to? Mm. I like, I kind of like Raquel Stewart's answer. And I like Robert Adley's answer. Okay. Coach, I'll let you choose that one. Oh boy. <laughs> who, was Raquel's, who was Raquel's answer? Raquel says, know what your next play is going to be. Maya says, know what's, what is going to happen before it does. These are a lot of half right answers. Robert said, focus on the upcoming play while still being present in the moment. And that is an awesome answer. Think ahead. All right, Robert, you got that one. <laughs> I think Robert gets that one. And you see, Danae was right on the ball, man. She's like, I don't know. Danae, how you doing, man? Are you all right? I know last year you had a big-time injury. I wanted to know how you were doing from time to time. I would, I would ask your mom, how, how was everything? Yeah, great participation, Danae. Mm -hmm. And that does it, everybody, for my session with Basketball IQ. What it is in a nutshell or in a summary is to take the skills that you've learned on the court, take the skills and experiences that you've learned. Oh, we have one more. <laughs> oh, yes, that's another one. I forgot that one. Sorry, let's, let's do ask that one. Let's mm -hmm. ask that one, coach. Is it a good idea to save the basketball from going out of bounds under another team's basket? And don't just say no. I want to know why. Johnny, it says, under the other team's basket. Okay, and Maya Hanfield answer, answered it. Maya Hanfield. Okay. Good job, Maya. And that's the truth. You don't want to save the ball on the opposing team's side of the floor because you might save it to uh, an on a, um, the other team and they'll have the ball right there. 
passing it to them for them to make an easy layup or easy score. So that was great, Maya. <laughs> and Maya has been Maya has been really in there trying to get an answer in. And this one is really good. And that's the reason why you don't save the ball under the opposing team's basket. Yes. All right. Okay, and that, that, that brings my presentation to a close. I just wanted to leave you with these parting words. Having that basketball IQ is very important and it will increase as you continue to learn the game, as you continue to play the game, and also as you apply all of the skills that you've learned to the right time for the right play whenever you play the game. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Coach Francis. Um, just a wealth of knowledge. And thank you for breaking down the information so that these kids can understand what it is to build um, their basketball IQ and understand the importance. And you'll see him again, I think, when tomorrow or Thursday. Yeah, so thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you too, Brian Roll. All right. So. Okay, Sarah McKinney. So make sure you tell Coach thanks, kids. You can put that in the chat. And we'll move on to our next segment. We're winding down now. Okay. All right. So we skipped this part earlier. So we'll go back to um, our themed fundamentals. Our theme video fundamentals. How many of you actually did your theme fundamentals yesterday? I think yesterday you had the cardio video um, with Coach McDonald, and then we had two videos, one from Coach Knowles. Well, two from Coach Knowles. They won advanced and they won beginners. Um, if you did it, just put yes in the chat. Let me know which one you did, and then I'll give you a few seconds to talk about it. Uh, tell me, was it challenging? What did you think about the drills? So let me just pull that up one second. Okay, so we'll hear from... Oh, man. <laughs> Sarah got a cramp. Let me um, pull up. Malik, you're free to leave. You're free to leave. That's the beauty about um, the Zoom camp. We'd love for you to stay until the end, but you're free to leave. And we have, we'll have a record of when you leave so that we know um, who's getting those certificates at the end. All right, so who is that? Kaizen, Kaizen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Kaizen speak because I keep mispronouncing his name. So first I want him to tell me how to say his name. And then you can tell me a bit about the workouts you did. So let me unmute your mic. Are you able to speak? <laughs> No, not yet. Let me stop my screen sharing. Let me try this again. Kaizen, are you able? I tried to unmute your mic. Theme fundamentals. Right, so if you could put in the chat again, if you completed the theme fundamentals with Coach John Lewis, um, put that in there if you did, and I'll 
give a couple of you a few a few minutes or a few seconds to just talk about how it went for you. So if you completed the cardio workout, just put yes cardio so I'll know that you completed that and then you can talk about about um, your experience with it. Yes, yeah, Sarah, that still counts. You're fine. Okay, so Deliam, um, unmute your mic, Deliam. And, and tell us about- Yes, ma'am. All right, where are you? Let me... Did I spell that correctly? I mean, did I say your name right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Tell, tell me about the cardio workout that you do the entire thing. Um, let me know how it went for you. Did you? Did it hurt? Just tell me about it. Which cardio workout? The theme video fundamentals. I would have sent you an email after camp yesterday. Did you do the workout with Coach McDonald? No, Mom. I didn't get to see him until last night. Oh, you said yes. Anyway, anyone else? Oh, sorry. I didn't know which one you meant. Okay, no problem. So if you completed the cardio workout, you can go ahead and type yes cardio and, and give us a, a brief update or review of how it went for you. Nobody did it? All right, these are things for you to do on your own. The only way you're gonna get better if you did it. Um, what about the theme fundamental workout with Coach Coach Knowles. Did anyone do the beginner's video? Let me know how that went. You can just type it in the chat. Get the most out of your device, complete it up by store. The game did none. Do, who's that talking? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. Did anyone do the advanced video? All right, so remember campers, the theme video fundamentals are for you to do after camp. Right now you're only working out about maybe 30 to 45 minutes during our skills and drill session. But after camp, you have the opportunity to view the theme videos and um complete a workout on your own so you're just going to take a look at oh okay so danae danae did the workout and she wanted to know where to get the floor mat um danae i'm gonna unmute you so that you can tell us a bit about which workouts you did and and then I'll give you some more information on where to get the floor mat. Uh, D A N. All right, Danae. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I mean, so the workout was good. It was. It wasn't that hard to me. I feel. We can't was, see you. Yet. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, sorry. But before you start, tell us um, a bit about yourself, where you go to school, and who you play for, etc. Pull your camera down a little bit. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, I played at at Mary Star for a few years while I was there for high school. I'm at Oak Hills in Minnesota right now, but I'm doing online classes. When I go over there for January, I'll start playing basketball for them. Okay, what grade are you in? Well, I just came out of school in June, so mm -hmm. my first year in college, I guess. Okay, awesome. And you yeah. got a scholarship for college, but then COVID happened. Yes, ma'am. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. All right, so tell us about the workouts that you did. Oh, and Danae is also, again, a junior national team player. So you probably, anyway, we're going to talk about that video at the end. 
I get the workout. It was, I feel like it was something that I would do every day just to work on my handles. Um, it was good. I, I, I feel like if I do it more and at a, a more intense speed, it'd be better. But with the floor mat, I think I'd have better foot placement with with the, the moves that he was doing. Okay. But it was good. I enjoyed it. It was good. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Did you do the advanced or the beginner's video? I did both. Just okay. to test it out. Did you do the cardio as well? Yes, sir. Oh, awesome. Well, Coach Denzel is actually in Freeport, so okay. in Bahama. So I'll make sure you get his contact information so that you can connect with him with the floor mat, and he might even be willing to work with you while you're home. Cause he, that's what he does um, full time. He's the CEO of D1 Development, so he can definitely help you with that. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so let's take a look. Thank you, Danae. Yes, yeah, sir. So theme video fundamentals, again, Coach Denzel and Coach Malcolm, they put together these videos. I'm going to share my screen. This is actually a clip from your ball handling drills for today. Uh, if you can see it, I'll, let me unmute my mic. So again, at the end of camp, we'll send you the link to these videos and you can watch it. And he, go, he does a good job with explaining the drill and then telling you key points on what is working on so that you can work on it on your own. So he's doing pounds with the box hit first. So get a desk. Working on that hand eye coordination. This one is floats with the box hit. So you're going to get back in our athletic stance. You're going to sit. Instead of hitting the table, the ball hits the floor. You're going to hit it back to the floor position. You're going to dribble. Definitely have to be coordinated to do that. So some of y'all, I know you can dance, but hopefully you can start working on some of these drills. This one is the low crossover exchanges with the box hit. So this is it at basically full speed almost. And you see he has the floor mat. So that's probably an investment you want to make. Um, to help you with your ball control. So this is for the beginners. This is the beginner's drill. So again, I'll send you the link so that you can have um, that information. So the next one is the, no, advance. No, that's your cardio. I think this is the beginners right here. I mean, advance. No, that's not it. All right, so this is the advanced video that you can take a look at after you finish with the beginners. You build on those skills. Just advance, ready to advance. Today we're gonna to work on our turn drops, which is a little different. So turn day, pocket day, drops. Time. So with a turn drop, we're going to use our turn, our turn power we worked on yesterday. We're going to turn power. We're going to actually use a turn pocket to be exact. So with this, instead of that, we're going to sit in front of our body. So with these drills, I mean, ball handling, this is the opportunity to get better, y'all. I mean, with COVID here, this is actually the time to get ahead. I know you can't physically compete, but you, what you could be doing during this time is working on your individual skills. And these are a variation of drills because you, you get bored just pounding the ball all day, right? So this gives you some more drills that you can incorporate into your workouts. 
And after camp is done, just be disciplined, set a schedule for yourself, and make sure, um, set a goal. You want to work out at least an hour a day on ball handling. If you do that, I guarantee you that when basketball season comes around again, you will be, um, you will have improved your ball handling skills, right? You always need to know how to handle the ball. There's always pressure on defense. Um, you have to be able to dribble the ball if you want to play. Even centers now, um, they're handling the ball. So I don't care if you're 6'5", uh, get the ball in your hand, um, work on some of these drills that uh, these coaches took the time out to make just for you, for you to get better. So again, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to watch this whole video, but this will be sent to you. And it'll also be on our YouTube page. If you like and subscribe, you'll get an update every time we post a, a, new, a new video. So that's the second theme video fundamental for today. Bahamas, entonces con la pelota, la posibilidad de mover la pelota. One second. Le regresan el balón. And the other theme video for today. One second. Is your circuit workout. So this is Coach McDonald. He put together the circuit workout uh, for you to get in shape. Again, you need to be bigger, faster, stronger in basketball. So he put this together for you and you can do it on your, on your free time. I'm telling you, if you do these exercises, you're going to be in shape. Feet so a little apart. Okay, you want to drop your butt. Back stay straight. So instead of just doing a squat, now you're doing a squat with the basketball. So you're working on your shooting form while you're squatting. So these are basketball specific drills. Okay, just like I'm getting into my shot, nice and low, go down. Okay, hop touches. This strengthens your quadriceps, your hamstrings, much needed for when you play defense. Right. Once you're done with that. Next, we'll go lunges here. Lunges, lunges strong I'm legs, legs strong glute. Back. You need it in basketball. Here, jump sports. So, so these are going to hurt, but okay. keep squat, pushing yourself. Up, and don't try to squat, do it all up, at one time. Up, keep building. Squat, and then after up, you can do squat, three up, rounds for 30 up, seconds, up, then do three up, rounds for a up, minute, I then do three squat. rounds for two minutes, Next. and keep building on it. So the ball down. Go behind these for claps, all right? So go here. So this is going to help you with laying up, jumping for the rebound. Let's go. Our ab and glute strength. You always need a strong core. So again, these are some more drills. So push up. So this is a full body workout. Basketball here, knees up, touch, side to side. Here we go, 30 seconds. All right. 30 seconds back, guys. That's the full body circuit. Three rounds, 30 seconds, each exercise, 12, uh, uh, 12 with uh, push-ups. Okay, so in addition to your theme fundamental drills, did anyone have a chance to look at the fundamentals in action? The game we sent yesterday was our junior national boys team in the central basket um, tournament. And today, our fundamentals in action is the under 17 girls team. And I think Danae was a part of that team, so you'll get to see a little bit of her skills. I'm not sure if she got hurt on that one. I can't remember exactly. Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Sarah, yes, the games are in Spanish because they were uh, filmed in Spanish speaking countries, but just mute, just mute the Spanish or maybe you could work on your Spanish as you listen or watch the game. Um, so yeah. Don't worry about the language. So this is a clip from our women's team when they played Barbados. 
Llega el disparo, se queda en la base del lado. Y se marca, se marca la... Carolyn is on this team as well. So we have a few campers who are actually on this junior national team. Um, Antonicia, who's at camp as well. There she is, who was the tallest girl at camp. She just passed the ball in. She's actually on this team. So she got to play. She was the youngest player on the junior national team. This is the under 17 team. And I believe she just turned 14 uh, recently. So. Right. You have the opportunity, if you're good enough to be on the team. There she is again, uh, taking the ball out of bounds. We can't see the screen. Oh, you can't? Mm. Okay, one second. Thanks for letting me know. Let me try this again. Can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. Then maybe. Yeah, so so, yeah. so I showed you your fundamentals in action. And again, you have your homework. You want to watch and execute today's theme video fundamentals. And then you want to watch the fundamentals in action. And Look at the things that you learned today in camp. Some of the ball handling drills. I know we didn't get too intense with um, Coach DeMarco, but again, observe the game. See what the players are doing. See what they can improve, improve on. Are they being coachable? Do they look like they have next play mentality? Are they hanging their heads when they miss a shot? Are they just being focused and locked in and having that next play mentality? So look at all these things as you watch the game. And as you play, hopefully you can start incorporating um, it into your 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 level of play. So if you have any questions, um, you can mute your mic now and ask. Can we um, leave? Yeah, like I like I mentioned, you're free to leave at any time. Just just click leave meeting, and you and you'll I want be some money. Um, great job to our winners for today. I have Kate Kaiser Dorset, Anaya DeVoe, Keyshawn Roll, Maya Henfield, Danae, Horatio, Deliam, Koyo Kito, Lenise, Brian. Oh, you want me watching? Deliam. Still on it? Sanchez, oh, Irvin, oh, Robert Adderley, and oh, just, I can't understand my own handwriting. Tay and Brandon Carey. Um, thank you all for staying until the end. Um, I noticed uh, quite a number of persons left, but I appreciate you staying until the end and finishing what you started today. Thank you for being here. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Feel free to ask them now. If not, we'll see you again tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. sharp. Thank you, Brian. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for letting me know that. Oh, let me see if this poll will work. Oh, a quick poll before you leave. Uh, there are a few questions there. If you can just take the next 20 seconds or so and answer those, those questions, I'd appreciate it. So just do that. And then after you're done, you, you can just leave the chat. So a poll should have popped up on your screen. So you can go ahead and complete that poll. Do y'all see it? Thank you, Lovato. Good job, Danae. Thank you for letting me know that. Do y'all see the poll? I don't see anyone completing the, the poll. It's a quick survey. No, let me try it again. Okay. I can pull this up and then put it in the back.
Lovato, you don't see it. Anthony, you don't see it. I see four, five persons are filling it out. I fill it out. Okay. Six persons. Danae, you see it yet? If you go to your home screen, you should be able to see it. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Hello. Okay. So eight persons. Today I don't know what to tell you. Are you ready? Maybe if you log out and then come back in, you'll be able to see it. Grab my phone up. Yes, you did. I had to wipe it off my shirt. Uh, can you mute your mic, please? Yeah, you won't saw me wipe it off because you don't know. Okay. Let me mute your because you all off the chain. Uh, if you don't see the... The survey, you can log out and then log back in. There aren't a lot to hear anyway. Okay. All right. So if you once you're done with the poll, you're free to leave. So we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you again. Thank you again. Benjamin is eating his lunch. To Liam, you're getting basketballs. That's your price. All right, see you. All right, thanks, Denise. See y'all. Adios. Y'all still have some work to do. You have three videos to watch, and I'm going to send you the links right now.